Okay, hello everybody and welcome to our first episode of So Chatty. And this is the brainchild of actually Walter because he thought that we should talk about our experiences with our sewing machines because now that we've been sewing now for a couple of years, we've gone through quite a few different machines. And I've had a lot of questions on the Idiot Quilter about my machines and about different things that I show and do. Now, we want to say right off the bat, this is coming from our own personal experience. We are not experts in the sewing uh, world. We just know what we know from what we know. And uh, this is going to be sort of an ongoing series we're thinking right now. Um, because as we started to plan what we wanted to talk about, we realized there is actually quite a bit to talk about. And we're looking at this from the point of view of people who might want to get into sewing, buying a sewing machine, and have never really bought a sewing machine at all. So, as I said, we are not experts. This is from our personal experience. Feel free to chime in with a comment uh, in the show no in below the, the show notes if you wish. But again, remember, we are not experts. We just know what we know. So, what are we going to talk about today for our very first episode well, of this? I was sort of thinking of like having a show a thing where yeah, we talked about uh, what it's like buying your first sewing machine type of thing. Mm -hmm. But um, and as I was started going through the series of uh, thoughts, there's so many questions that came up to my mind that why why somebody would buy um, one machine over another, or how they would go about buying a machine and uh, stuff like that. So. Um, that's why I started getting bogged down. I thought there's no way we could do this in one se session as to how many uh, That'd be a different whole day session. <laughs> options there are to buying a sewing machine. So I just wanted to maybe go over some brief things as to um, maybe initial things that you might uh, uh, think about when you're buying a sewing machine and uh, like what you need it for and things like that. Okay, so before we get into that, I think maybe a jumping off point might be where I can uh, say what my experience was, how I got into buying my first sewing machine. Actually, I had three years ago, I got into quilting, but I had not, didn't have any desire to quilt or anything like that. The reason I bought a sewing machine had to do with the fact that I bought a brand new Cricut maker. Yeah, a Cricut maker is an electronic die cutting machine. I'm sure everybody has heard of the Cricut. Uh, it's primarily used by uh, paper crafters, and that's what I was, still am. But um, they came out with the Cricut Maker, and the Cricut Maker had a new feature. It had a rotary blade cutter. Now, rotary blade cutter, most of us know that are in, you know, sewing, that that is the chief cutting device for cutting fabric. Well, Cricut Maker came out with one, a little tiny one, uh, that would cut fabric. Now, Cricut machines could cut fabric before this, but it was with a blade. And there was a lot of problems with that. Uh, the blade would, you know, pull the fibers in your fabric. It would stretch the fiber fabric. The fabric wouldn't stick right. So this was an innovation. So I bought a Cricut maker and I bought it. That was one of the things that sold me on it. I already had other Cricut machines before. So I got my Cricut maker and there's a project on it for making like a wall hanging. But you needed a sewing machine to sew it together. Now, you could do it by hand, except that I'm not a very good hand sewer and I'm still not. It's bloodletting more than anything, mine all over everything. Um, so I said to Walter, well, actually, I didn't even plan to buy a sewing machine. We were in Costco. Costco had a brother sewing machine that had advertised 50 different decorative stitches on it, um, had come with all these other little extras to it for about $189. And I thought, holy crap, that's cheap. So um, I bought it. And I was so right, it was cheap. <laughs> because yes, I did my first sewing project on it. And yes, my first sewing project got me into quilting in the whole bit. But the machine literally had pieces dropping off it after the first project. Um, so that's when I decided that I needed a decent machine, but machines are expensive. So 
off we looked around and we looked online and because I was getting into quilting I found some local quilting stores and of course I ultimately settled on ultimate sewing center which if you're a regular viewer of the idiot quilter you've heard me talk about Shirley and ultimate sewing here in Oshawa Ontario Canada many many times and she was excellent and I came home with a 6700p a Janome 6700p now $189 for a brother and 3000 well it was 2500 plus tax right which yeah. makes it $3000 $3, I stand corrected as mm -hmm. usual mm -hmm. not it it came so what was I talking about yeah interrupt here so about three thousand dollars okay for a sewing machine now some of you that might be just in the market for a sewing machine right now are probably dropping a load in your pants because you're going three thousand dollars oh wait I can tell you I've spent a lot more than three thousand dollars but those are for future episodes on this so right now we're just talking about basically what did I do wrong when I brought bought the brother machine and what do you do if you really want a sewing machine? Do you need to spend $3,000? First thing is nothing against brother machines. Okay. The only thing with brother machines is you'll often find them, the very low end brothers in a big box store like a Costco or at a Walmart, and you're going to find them for a ridiculously low price. And there's a reason they are ridiculously low. They are not for anybody who is seriously looking at getting into sewing. Okay. So let's talk first about, oh, and, and then the other thing was um, buying a, a brand name machine from a reliable dealer. And we'll come to all of that. But first, let's talk about what you need to decide for yourself before you even well, actually, look for a machine. Uh, so Steve purchased the $3,000 one, but which is actually a lot more machine than maybe he really needed at the time. But um in retrospect, it's not been a bad purchase. Well, no, I because you use it now. <laughs> it is now Walter's machine. <laughs> but, um, but it, I mean, for the average person that's just looking to get into sewing and stuff like that, it's probably much more machine than they really need. Um, um, but it really depends on the person and what specifically you're looking for. Like if you're looking for uh, that particular machine is was designed for quilters in mind because it, it has a large surface sewing area and um, it has a lot of things geared to quilters on it. So, um, and of course, like any product that you buy, um, the more you spend, the more features you get type of thing. Yeah. Um, but you can get, uh, there are machines all the way from entry level, which aren't really much more than what he spent on the brother as an entry level machine that is actually a decent quality machine. And uh, all the way up to more moderate machines that are like, five, six hundred dollars type of thing. And uh, then you go up from there. Like, I mean, the more expensive the machine, the more features you get, uh, a little bit better quality. It does more things. It may so thicker fabric or things like that. So don't be afraid that you're going to have to get stuck buying a really expensive machine. It just really depends on what your, yeah. uh, what your needs are at the time. And that's the thing. Let's come back to that. Why do you want a sewing machine? That's the question you have to answer for yourself. Before you even start looking at brand names, you're looking at dealers, looking at what the price is, you've got to answer that question. I wanted a sewing machine because I had bought the Cricut Maker and I wanted to take advantage of some of the sewing features that went with that. Okay. And then I, I blew into quilting. But do you want a machine? for casual crafting because there are many, many paper crafters out there who use a, little, a sewing machine for stitching on actual papers, on uh, cardstock, things like that, or they take bits and pieces of fabric scraps and they make something out of those. If that's all you want the machine for, you're not interested in doing anything else but that, then a cheap machine is going to get you through that. Okay, so for example, when I bought the brother machine, that's what I bought it for. I bought it more for crafting, not for real sewing. Um, but if you're looking for a machine because let's say, well, if you might be looking for a machine because 
you need to hem pants or skirts, something like that. You may need to do minor repairs and you're not good at hand sewing. You'd rather, you know, do it with a machine. Maybe you can get machines that will sew buttons on for you. Actually, that's a feature I really like because I hate sewing on buttons and the machine makes short business of that. But maybe that's all you want it for. In other words, for casual garment repair, you know, um, then you don't need an expensive machine for that. Maybe you want to play around with making something like taking pre-made items, like say tea towels from Walmart or something like that, or bath towels, and you want to sew a, a, an initial on them, or you want to put a little fancy stitching on them or something like that, or add some rickrack or ribbon or something like that as for a gift. You don't need an expensive machine for that. But if you're looking for a machine where you want to take classes to learn how to sew garments, for example, because that's what Walter does right now, or you want to quilt, or you want to make bags, whatever, then you're going to have, you should start looking at something a little bit more elaborate and a little bit more expensive. So, so like, so there's different ways of buying a machine. You can go out and say, okay, there's like, I mean, there's people that are uh, experienced sewers, right? And you would think that an experienced sewer knows what they want, hmm. but, hmm. Well, we found but that they don't really... always know what they want either, right? So you can go out and buy a machine at a big box store, uh, like uh, Costco or uh, a Walmart or something like that. And usually uh, Walmart and uh, some big box stores usually deal with uh, the lower end models of machines. So. They may not be the machines that you're looking for that uh, will become a long, what do you call it, uh, something that you'll hang on to for a long time and, and use all the time type of thing. Um, so, uh, and plus, you got to really know what you're buying when you buy a, one of these machines. Like a sewing machine is really different. It's not like uh, any other product that you'll buy. Any kind of, it, it is a machine that does something for you. Um, even if you're a power tool, you can buy a saw, a saw only saws, right? But I mean, uh, you don't get, uh, sewing machines have so many variety of features that uh, vary from one machine to another. You need to find a machine that's specific to what you want to do, right? Um, and yeah, also everybody, well, uh, they all sew. Yeah, they all sew a straight line, but they there are many other features on one of these machines that um, that are advantageous depending on what you need to do. Like if you're a quilter, you may need certain features a little bit more often than if you're a garment maker, or if you're doing sewing for the home, like pillows and draperies and stuff like that. So you kind of need a machine that'll do the things that you want to do. And that's where uh, we always sort of uh, promote uh, going to a dealer to purchase a machine because a, a good dealer will uh, guide you into what kind of purchase you want. Like, are you just wanting to get into sewing? You don't know whether you want to do it or not. They can guide you into bu buying a low end machine just to see if you like it or whatever. And a good dealer is going to ask you some key questions because they want to match up a machine to your needs and a really good dealer is not only going to just match it up with your immediate needs, but may suggest to you future needs. Because I have found, as I got in more into sewing, things I'd never thought about before that I'd be interested in, I needed a machine to do that. And luckily for us, we have an excellent dealer in Janome Machines, and that's Shirley at Ultimate Sewing here in the town yeah. we live in. And you don't want a dealer that uh, will pressure you into something that you don't really want, right? Like uh, I, the fellow that uh, uh, d does the classes that I go to that uh, helps me with the uh, uh, sewing garments, um, he has a daughter and the daughter wanted to get into sewing. So he has suggested for her to go to a dealer and just look for a very basic sewing machine for her needs, right? And she found one that basically cost her $200 at a dealer. It's very limited, only has very limited stitches on it. But he said he was really surprised at the quality of the machine that she got because it, it's able to go through thick fabric, which is something you really, uh, that's a real big one for if you're sewing, because as soon as 
you it's very easy to get uh, something where you get a few layers of fabric and a cheap machine will bog down in it. Whereas uh, a one that's a little bit better quality will uh, have no problem getting through it. And he su was surprised that this $200 machine was able to get through um, the fabric that, that she was see, using. That was why my parts were falling off my first brother machine. That machine was all plastic made inside. But I did not know that at the time. I never even thought about the insides of the sewing machine. But I tried to go through a little bit thicker fabric. Now, I am not talking. This is how cheap this machine was. I am not talking trying to go through leather or many layers of denim. I was going through a couple of, I think I was trying to do the binding on this wall hanging I was making. And so I may have been going through four layers of fabric, cheap fabric, because I didn't know anything about fabric at the time either. And uh, it bogged down on me and then I forced it because I didn't think the feed dogs were, well, I didn't understand what feed dogs were at the time. So I thought, well, I need to yank it. Wrong. Don't yank it. So if I hadn't done that, the machine might have held together. But yes, it was user error on my part, but it was such a cheap machine. It should have been able to handle that. But I'm just going to pause this for a minute and come right back because there's something really bothering me right now. It's the lighting on the side of my head. So we'll be right back. It'll just be a second if I can find my mouse. Okay, back to dealers. Um, dealers, there are dealers that offer often a variety of machines, but then there's also dealers that specialize in one brand or another, like the brand, the uh, place that we go to specializes in Janome machines. And that's primarily what we have is Janome machines here in our house. But um, other popular brands are like, Janome and Elna are two machines, but Janome makes Elna, so they're basically the same. Um, there's Bernina, Faf, uh, Husqvarna, and Brother. Uh, I know that Brother is popular in the United States, but I know that their low-end machines are often um, not very good quality and more moderate and upper machines are a little better quality. I know, I know that Brother is popular in the United States, but in Canada, Janome and Bernina are the biggest um, names, uh, but it depends on what area you live in. Some uh, areas have more uh, choice than other areas. In our area, it's either Janome or uh, Bernina. Um, and the other brands are more difficult to find. Now, some people do not want to deal with a dealer because they're afraid it's going to be like going in to buy a used car, that you're going to get the hard sale. And I'd like to say that that isn't true. But with some dealers, I have heard that is true. Not with the one that we have. Yeah. The other thing that's interesting about going to a dealer is uh, a lot of things, uh, they do uh, more things than like a big box store can do for you. If you buy a big an item at a big box store, you take it home and all you have is the manual. Right? Or at Walmart. Or at Walmart. All you have is the manual to deal with, right? If you can't get the machine to work, your only other option is to return it to the store, right? And get your money back type of thing. But if you're dealing with a dealer, a dealer often gives you some support. Like if you, there's something in the manual that you don't understand, uh, they can help you out with it. The dealer that we go to offers free lesson to learn. If you will purchase a machine with them, uh, she offers you free lessons to help you use your machine and get to know it a bit better, especially if you're not very experienced. And um, she also offers a discount for other items in her store, which uh, she sells uh, threads and um, fabric, fabric, of course. right? But and she tends to deal more mostly in quilting uh, supplies rather than um, uh, sewing for garments, right? But I mean, different dealers may offer different things, type of thing. They may they may not sell um, fabric. They may sell other things. I don't know. But I mean, don't go to a dealer like that goes to that sells TVs and sewing machines, for instance. Just go to one that sells sewing machines and sewing supplies. And the other thing you want to keep in mind is if, if you have a problem with your machine where it has to be repaired, do they do it in-house or do they send it out? Right. At, the, at the store we go to, at the shop we go to, she has a technician on her staff and that machine is 
fixed locally and her technician is trained in Janome machines and other sewing machines. She will service other brands as well. She will not just service uh, Janome and uh, her technician is excellent. Yeah, you'll, you'll find that a lot of uh, these sewing machine dealers have their own technicians available for uh, people to have problems. Eventually, ev uh, inevitably, if you use your sewing machine a lot, you will need to have there will at some point in time in, in your sewing machine's life have to be looked at to, to fix a but minor you, item. But you can't get that kind of service from Walmart or from Costco or any of the big box stores. They're just a retailer. Just like if you went in there to buy, you know, nails or paint or clothes or whatever, it's the same thing. Yeah, so like buying a sewing machine is a very unique product compared to anything else that you buy. Well, it's like buying a car. Basically, yeah. You've got to look around. You've got to do your homework first. Don't just walk into a sewing store that sells machines and say, yeah, I want to buy a sewing machine. But I don't know what I want. Because that's not <laughs> going to help them. Now, if you have an unscrupulous dealer, they will say, ooh, they'll see a great big S on your forehead for sucker. And they are going to try and sell you a more machine than you need because they want more profit. So if you have a bad feeling about it when you walk into the store, look around before you talk to somebody. Get a feel for what the store's like. Look at how many people are in the store? If you know somebody that sews, maybe you can get a recommendation yeah. from them as to what store you go. I'm not saying that all we're sitting, sitting here saying, giving you an idea that like there's a lot of these unscrupulous dealers out there. But well, no, but uh, but you know, like anything, there's a, a bad apple. Somewhere. Buyer beware. I mean, it's like this is an investment. A sewing machine is an investment. Okay, and so like you, I mean, most you want to get the most bang for your buck. Like most dealers we've encountered are usually pretty, uh, pretty. Uh, we've never hit an unscrupulous yeah. one, but I have heard of ones. Yeah, I have been told people have written to me on my idiot quilter channel and have told me horror stories of what they have gone through. And sometimes it's not so much that the dealer is unscrupulous, scrupulous, it's lack of knowledge. That's the other thing. They will off, they will, those kind of dealers will fall back and blame you for the problem with the machine. And yes, there could be user error. Okay. It is a machine. Okay. However, if the first thing they say to you is, oh, yeah, well, you did something, you did something wrong, then not good. What they should do is troubleshoot with you and try to help you solve the problem. So, that's what we mean by, you know, a good deal, the difference between a good dealer and somebody that's just out to sell you a machine and bye bye. It's buying a machine is easy if that's all you want is a machine. It's the after service that's important. So all machines that you buy, it doesn't matter what, pretty much anything you buy, unless you buy a dedicated machine that does something specific, um, all of them will sell a straight line pretty much right but different machines come with different options that if you're if you're not experienced sewer um there's some options that you may not be aware of that a, a sewing machine will do like uh it does some do decorative stitches right um there's simple things like the width of your stitch can be different a cheaper machine has a smaller width and a, a more expensive machine has a bigger width and you wonder why why would I need to worry about the width of my stitch, right? Well, there's some things like zigzag stitches and decorative stitches that need a wider stitch. So the wider the stitch you have, the more flexibility you have with stuff. When I'm doing clothing sewing, um, I sometimes need a three quarter eight, three eighths inch seam, or I need a, a five eighths inch seam or something like that. I mean, that doesn't really mean that I need the width of the stitch to be different, but if I have to do a zigzag stitch or something like that, then I need a wider stitch. Um, there's things like stitch lengths. There's things like uh, positioning the needle where you need to have a position. Some machines, uh, more moderate machines, have the ability to position your needle anywhere you want in the width of the, your sewing field, right? And uh, um, uh, there's other options like uh, um, uh, a threading assistant that helps you thread the needle. Um, there's other things there has a cutting assistant, which 
Okay, uh, we're boggling people's minds yeah. now. You have to remember that we are directing this towards people who want to get into sewing, and we've just thrown at you a whole <laughs> lot of things all at once. So let's back it up. What have we been talking about? Let's do a little recap here. First of all, why do you want a machine? And we've talked about that. Two, where do you buy a machine? How do you know a good dealer from not so good a dealer? That kind of thing. And we've talked about their knowledge, their ability to fix your machine if it needs repair, their ability to assess your needs as a sewer and to, you know, match a machine to your needs as well. But now what we've gotten into is talking about accessories and features. So Walter's been talking about stitch length and stitch width and the ability to move the needle and a whole bunch of other stuff. Well, let's back up a touch. One thing that people notice first on a sewing machine and what dealers will often point out to you is how many different types of stitches there are on a machine. Basically, you need a machine that sews a straight stitch and a zigzag. Now, there are machines that don't even sew a zigzag. They are called straight stitch machines, and that's all they do. They tend to be more on the industrial side. They tend to be for power sewers, who all they're doing is doing seams, uh, even for quilters as well, because really, decorative stitches are not big on a quilter's list of things because they're doing patchwork. So they just need a straight stitch. However, finding those kind of machines are not necessarily cheaper because they just do a straight stitch in some cases they're a little bit more expensive because they are designed to be fast and to go through a variety of materials like they're going through butter so you're going to walk in and you're going to see 50 100 200 even 300 different decorative stitches you'll find stitches that do zigzags and curves and patterns and monograms and things like that. You can actually write something out with some of these sewing machines. And we're not talking embroidery. We're just talking decorative stitches on this. And you will be amazed at them. Oftentimes these dealers will have swatches where they show some of the decorative stitches that stand out and they'll use very pretty threads in them as well. And you'll look at it and go, Ooh, that's really nice. And your mind's going, I could put that on the bottom of a towel. I could, you know, use that to finish off a hem on something and, and whatnot. And that is great. That's wonderful that you can do that. But be aware, the more decorative stitches, the more expensive your machine is going to be because it's a more complex machine. So do you need a lot of decorative stitches? Well, I can tell you this. I had my first machine, the brother had 50. 50 decorative stitches for 189 bucks. That was really good. I was impressed by that. My 6700 has, how many is that? Got 100, 200, 200 decorative stitches. My Janome 15,000 had over 300 decorative stitches. You know how many of those I've used? Probably three, maybe four. Yeah, very few people use all their decorative stitches. However, the problem is that sometimes the higher and uh, machine the higher up the machine goes, it, it'll have more decorative stitches, but it also will include a lot more accessories. So what do we mean by accessories? Well, a key accessory to any sewing machine is the feet, okay? Some of your specialty stitches take specialty feet. Some machine, most machines will come with a, a variety of feet. They will come with uh, what they call, it's usually called a, an open toe um, or it could be a closed toe, uh, standard foot. Um, so that'll do, allow you to do zigzag. It'll allow you to do straight stitching in it. Uh, it'll come with maybe a zipper foot as well because that's for people who want to do garments it'll probably come with a button holder which is actually a really nice thing to have okay if you know for sewing on buttons and also but if the very the very basic machines won't have a button, button holder. holder okay have to... the very very basic 
bottom, yeah. very bottom of the line with that. But these are the things that will come with it. But there'll be a whole bunch of other feet available. And as time goes by, you can add to that. Yeah, like for instance, uh, just a quick sample, a uh, lady that I know in one of the sewing groups I'm in, um, she said, well, I don't need a machine with all these decorative stitches. She's a mostly experienced sewer. Like I said, they, they don't, experienced sewers don't always know what they want either. No. Um, uh, they, she went, she says, well, I want a really good machine but I don't need all the decorative stitches. So she purchased a machine based on the fact that it didn't have a lot of decorative stitches. And um, turned out that she didn't, it, the machine, because it was a lower end machine, didn't have as many decorative stitches, didn't come with as many accessories. So she ended up having to buy a whole bunch of different feet that the machine didn't come with. Um, so she ended up sending, sending more money uh, buying accessories and usually a lot of times like the accessories aren't usually very expensive but they do add up after a period of time yeah so uh sometimes buying a machine with all the accessories that you need or may need is uh maybe more of an option so instead of all looking at what decorative stitches it has maybe you need to look at what accessories come with it yeah and okay so that's feet then there's uh plates that go into it your your uh, presser foot plate, which is basically the hole in the machine where the needle goes down. Well, most machines will come with two plates. They will have a straight stitch plate and a zigzag uh, plate. And you have to have, if you're going to do zigzag, you have to have a zigzag plate because it's got a larger hole and because the needle goes back and forth like this. And if you have a straight stitch one, it's just a hole in the center kind of a thing. There may be a hole on either side, but that's because the needle's just going down. It's not moving. If you try to do a zigzag stitch on a straight needle plate, you will break the needle. Okay. Well, mind you, most machines now are electronic and they'll have a sensor in them that checks what plate you've got. The uh, a little higher in mm -hmm. price ones have that. Yeah, that. yeah. And so that takes up another feature. Most machines today are computerized to a certain degree, but not all of them. The very lower level machines are still mechanical. They're analog. They have a dial or whatever, or they might have a button, but the button's analog. It, it does very little uh, with that. With today's machines, the more decorative stitches you have, the more features, the more you depend upon the computer built into it. The other thing too is, you might want to look at your workspace, what uh, the bed of the machine. How big is that? If you're just going to do small little things, like you're going to make some napkins, you're going to put some decorative stitches on a towel, um, that kind of thing, you don't need a huge bed. But if you're going to get into quilting or you're going to get into garment sewing, then you're going to want more workspace. And this is where some machines, lower end ones, will not come with what they call an extended table. Higher end machines do. And this is an add on that fits over your machine and gives your bed area so much more uh, area to work on. Now, oftentimes you can buy these separate with a machine, but they're actually quite pricey. They're not $25, okay? They're more like $100 plus and up depending on the brand of the machine also speaking of the bed there are some machines that have something called a free arm now if you're a garment sewer or a bag maker you may want a free arm a free arm means that part of your bed slides out and you have a thinner area to sew on but you can take something that's circular and you can kind of move it around that little arm piece yeah, like a, a sleeve yeah or a uh... cuff Cuff or something, or the, you're doing the lining on the inside of a bag and you want to go around. But that is a feature that's usually on a little higher end machines, not that much higher, but let's say the mid range machines tend to have a mid arm and not all those. My machine, which is a fairly top of the line machine, does not have a free arm. Yeah, and actually, the one that I use is actually a fairly uh, high end yeah. machine. And it doesn't have a free arm either yet i do garments and i haven't really had too many problems doing garments usually it's more like um if you're sewing uh baby clothes and things like that where a free arm would be a little bit more advantageous 
Now, the other features that you might find on as you go up in the models, a knee lift. What's a knee lift? Well, basically it is a little piece of metal that sticks out of the side of the machine and it's right at about the level of your knee. And when you push it with your knee, you raise your foot up. Now you're gonna say, well, why would you need that? Well, that's the kind of the other features, automatic foot uh, lifter. Um, you may be familiar with the older style machines that have the lever at the back. In fact, all the machines have a lever at the back and you slip, oh, yeah. you lift that up, your foot comes up, you put your fabric under it, you suppress your foot and you push that down and it puts the, the foot down on your fabric. Well, on the machines we have, which are higher end machines, that's automatic. It's, when you go to cut your, when you are finished, you just push a button, it lifts it right up or because they're computerized, depending on what you're doing, it will automatically know that you will want to lift up that foot at that point. For example, another feature is an automatic thread cutter. Um, and you wouldn't believe how important that feature is. If you're uh, doing a lot of sewing, if you have to stop to cut your thread every time you finish a row or whatever, or finish a, a piece, it's tedious. With this, when you hit the button, it cuts the thread, lifts up the foot, you're ready to go to your next piece. It's a little thing, but it's a really nice thing. Once you've had it, you can't live without it. And another accessory, which is really nice, and it's one we all love to hate, is the automatic needle threader. Okay, if your eyesight isn't too good, you may want this feature. However, I'm going to say this with caution. I said it's one of those features we love to hate because automatic needle threaders have a tendency to break fairly easily. They are very temperamental little things. Now, some are sort of manual. You thread the machine and then there's a little lever and you pull it down and it takes a little wire and automatically positioned in such a way it goes through your needle, comes back out, it's pulling your thread through. On my 15,000, it had a completely automatic needle threader, which meant that when I thread the machine, I pushed a button, I didn't have to pull down a lever, it just went boom, 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 and up. Yeah, for the first three times. And then after that, well, there are so many things that can go wrong with them. But once you've had a needle threader, whatever type it is, it's something you can't, you can't live without. Again, so these are little things. Lighting. How much lighting does your machine have? The lower end machines have maybe one little light, okay? You need a lot of light and you need a throat, the underneath part over top of your bed. You want as much lighting as you can possibly get and you want it to be adjustable. Now, there's also other things that you worry about is how heavy is your machine? Yeah. Right, I mean, if you stick your machine in one spot and you never move it, I mean, that's okay, but if you put it away or something. Or if, like you're that, try, or if you're planning to go to a class. Yeah, I take it with you. So that may be a factor in what you're buying is, is, is how heavy the machine is. Because if it's a, the machines, the upper end machines can get very heavy, like we're talking 40 pounds. And uh, the, lower, the lower end machines are usually about 17 or 18 yeah. pounds or something like that, which isn't, it's, well, it depends on how, how muscular <laughs> yeah they are also they tend to be awkward too the bigger the the more expensive machines tend to be heavier and more awkward they're not meant for moving around in fact that's why i have several machines i have one that's meant for taking to classes in fact i bought a lower end machine uh to take to classes that was a lot much lighter didn't have a lot of the bells and whistles and the whole bit. Now, mind you, that was an $1,100 machine. So when I say a lower end machine, it's still a really good machine. In fact, I just gave it to my sister um, because I wasn't using it uh, anymore because I've got this other one. But um, yeah, that's a factor in, in that as well. Now I'm trying to think of what other features, well, a bobbin winder, of course, but they all come with bobbin winders uh, these days. So that isn't a really a big thing that's automatic with them um covers uh i don't know i never put a cover on my machine uh but so, you know but i use my machine every day 
Other people might only get their machine out on occasion and wherever they're storing it, they wanna keep dust off it because dust can be a killer to your machine. And that's a talk for another day about maintenance and things like that. We're not gonna do that today. Um, but some have hard covers. Most will come with some sort of cover, uh, but it'll be a, plas a plastic one, a vinyl cover kind of a thing, which is okay if you just wanna keep the dust off it. Uh, if it's a, a really inexpensive machine, like we're talking 200 bucks, 300 bucks, 400 bucks, it probably won't come with any kind of cover at all. Of course, there's could be your first sewing project, right? Making yourself a cover. Well, we were like we're talking machines. We're talking. We have upper upper uh, model machines, but the but there's lots of machines that are available for a beginner that are a little bit more moderate priced. Right? Yeah, like I mean, you can get um, a really decent machine for you know a little under five hundred bucks. Yeah, like. Um, Sure, you can buy one for two hundred dollars at Costco or whatever, and be unhappy with it after mm -hmm. five minutes, right? But you could buy a decent machine that costs a couple hundred dollars more and be really happy with it. Um, especially if you're doing uh, odd garment sewing or um, the odd house project or something like that. And that's probably the best, the best deal would I would consider if you're a beginner sewer is to get a more moderate machine um, if you can afford it. Yeah. Now, just before we finish up this segment, something we need to, to talk about here when we're talking about buying your first machine or a machine and uh, assessing, we've already said, what do you want a machine for? But also, how much are you going to use it? We're both power users. And what I mean by power user is uh, we use our machines every day, every day. Well, I don't use my machine and, every day. And but. I have a tendency to push my machines to the limit uh, as well. So, but if you're, you're getting a machine because you want to occasionally, you know, repair clothing or do a little bit of decorative stitching or something for a gift, you don't need to spend a ton of money. But <laughs> you're still spending money. You want it to last. Yeah, I mean... Um, it, you can't really buy, if you can afford it, you can't really buy too much machine. I no, mean, really. Like, I no. mean, if you get a machine that's more advanced than what you really need, you may grow into it and you may end up buying a lower end machine. And then two years down the road, decide that, oh, geez, I should have bought that more expensive yeah. one. The other thing too, is you may find as you get into sewing that you may want because your machine can do something that you've never done before you might want to explore that possibility because for example uh, there's something called the blind hem foot and it's meant to do what it says to create a blind hem on a pair of pants on a skirt or something like that however there are other things you can do with a blind Ham foot that you probably have never thought yeah like of. i mean you know, i do garment sewing i use blind hem foot to to make an even seam on some of my yeah. uh, uh some of my projects so it's it's i don't actually use it for hemming but i use it for um keeping my stitches straight on on garments um something we didn't really cover about going to a dealer is that a lot of dealers take trade-ins and often oh, yeah. they resell the, they recondition the trade-ins and resell them. So a lot of times dealers may have a good quality used machine they can offer for sale um, for a lower price. If you're just starting out, you can get, uh, sometimes you can get a good used machine. And again, go to a reputable dealer um, because they will have machines that they know, they will give you a certain amount of a guarantee. It won't be the full guarantee you get on a sewing machine when you buy it brand new, but they will stand behind the machine, uh, you know, for you too. So that's a good way to get started as well with them. In those cases, you might be able to get a more quality machine for a lesser price. So it, you just have to deal with the fact that it's a few years old. You may actually have an older machine sitting around the house that you inherited from a parent or something like that, that you maybe never really used or only used a few times, but it's just sitting in storage. Dig it out, 
plug it in, make sure that it's running, take it to a dealer and ask them if they'll give you anything for it. Like if you if you know um, Sears, um, Sears, in Canada, Sears in Canada used to offer, used to have their own line of machines called Kenmore's. And as far as I know, many of those machines were made by uh, the Janome company. So uh, parts are still available for those and everything else. Some of these dealers will be able to take one of those machines and get it reconditioned for you. So yeah. just because it's a Kenmore and Kenmore doesn't really exist much, well, in Canada, it doesn't exist. Um, don't think that you can't get it repaired, so. Yeah, because um, service technicians are trained on a variety of machines and probably i don't know this for sure but i have a feeling the basic fundamentals of sewing machines are all pretty much the same so when they know how to fix one they can probably figure out how to fix another one as well but these guys if they do it for a living they're not just some guy down the street that you know and he tinkers with them they have a lot of training and and know what to do so I think that's what we want to talk about today on this first edition of yeah. So Chatty. Um, like if you, I know we're kind of all over the place with that, with that we're not really super organized, but um, the, the, if you have any questions, ask them and you can put something them else in the comments that below. we need to cover. We will. Um, we can, we can address that in a future video. Yeah. So speaking of future videos, we're going to talk about maintenance and care of a machine. Uh, these are very, very important things to do. And we're going to talk probably about some of the common problems you might have with a machine that are easy enough to solve on your own. So you don't need to panic. Um, we'll probably talk about the different machines we actually own because we have had quite a variety of machines. I think we're up to about eight or nine now between the two of us. So, you know, we'll extend out beyond sewing machines to specialty machines like cover stitch machines, sergers, and embroidery machines. Embroidery machines is a topic all on its own as well. Um, we'll probably also talk about, um, oh, I don't know, other things uh, to deal with this. But as Walter just said, if you have some questions that you, or some things you'd like us to look into or talk about from our point of view, uh, please put them in the comments below and we will address those in future editions of So Chatty. So we hope you enjoyed this episode. We hope it wasn't too disorganized uh, for you. Um, and uh, we'll see you for the next So Chatty, uh, which will probably be up in another week or two. It depends. We'll see. Okay. So have a good day. Yeah. Happy sewing. Happy sewing. We'll Bye. And we'll see you later. Bye-bye.